Hey folks, let's see if this is working. I'm sure Pony Pimp will be able to tell me audio and video okay and all that kind of stuff. Hi. All right, today we're back with another uh, see if I can learn stuff while there's people watching. <laughs> she married her talking over my song. I have no respect for you and your music, but mainly you. Um, hello, people. We've got some. We've got a few of you in tonight. Looks like the regular gang, except Twitch is being its usual usual self and not showing me the viewer list. So, uh, hey, Van Laser, uh, Entropyad, Ponder Pimp, Chimera. Um, I'm sure I saw Darius in here earlier, but I was running around getting ready. Um, a bot or two, I'm sure. Yes, Tycholine's in. <laughs> got to bump up them numbers. It's all about the ad money. Hey, love the Semtex. Hey, good to see you. Sweet audio and video okay, thank you very much, sir. All right. So, thing I wanted to look at today, she goes back away. Um, let me give you a link. I want to start looking at erosion, uh, procedural erosion, for making our terrains look cooler. Because we can use pearl and noise and all that stuff to make some basic terrains, but so much of the realism is like, that's kind of constructive uh, geology kind of stuff. Like, you can imagine it's like, plates pushing together and pushing things up into mountains we're adding to get the octaves of noise but so much of what makes terrain terrain is how erosion is affected and how weathering processes have taken it down so here is a paper um i recommend to yeah let, I'll, I'll i'll jump back and we'll we'll come forward like when i was in <laughs> when i did my one year of university that i failed spectacularly um i got really interested in some of this procedural erosion um, stuff and but but then I'd say I kind of crashed and burned out of that and didn't touch any of it for a while so this is a real kind of going back to some of the old stuff for me now that paper was very cool but it wasn't written in a kind of GPU like parallel like parallelism mindset I will do words eventually maybe we'll see it's funny as well because this is like episode 9 and I, I used to comfort myself by saying, ah, the first 10 episodes of every, you know, podcast or anything that's ever out is a bit shit. Like, so the first 10 you get for free. So now I'm meant to be good at this, which will be entertaining. Um, is the audio video lagging behind? I don't know. Um, oh, with the um, with the chat? Definitely. Like, there's, there's, there's always a bit. I will check to see what you have said in a minute. What's... Um Your animate PDF is broken. Oh dear. It's going to be one of these days. Audio and video are synced here. Cool, that's good. Um, nice. Alrighty, cool. So yes, um, we're going to dig back into this uh, kind of stuff. Uh, which is going to be really cool. I've had a brief look through this paper. And so that's why I'm linking it to you guys. Because I'm going to be jumping around a bit. And you'll probably want to have that paper up if you're interested in following along with the maths and logic -y bits. And I think what we'll do is we'll just, um, as we've got that existing project, I said we were going to just fork off from master every week and um, work from there. Also, I would be interested in the audio. I've done a Windows update or something and I was getting another, like a microphone boost option. Was that on the other microphone? No, nope, I'm talking shit. That was the other microphone. Never mind. This one is still fine. So everything should be the sound, same as normal. Um, cool. Wow, streams with minutes behind. Yeah, Shimmer, like, um, I'm actually surprised at how bad YouTube is for streaming so far. Um, like, really, really frequently um, having uh, drops and, and on, it's like decent channels as well. So it's definitely the YouTube to me part of the equation. Um, yeah. Right. So, um, Let's start playing. Right, let me jump over to the right machine again. So I'm over here and we have the doodly stuff should be working. We will need that today because we're going to be working with papers. So we will want to be able to make notes. That's cool. Let's go and get that project we had before. What was it called? Play with, oh no, it wasn't in there. It was play with verts. And we are on episode eight still. So let's check out master, create a new branch starting on master. And this is going to be, Episode 9. 
And we will just, I will push that later. Push it at the end of the stream, doesn't matter. And let's start Lisp. And then I'm gonna find out what weirdy branches actually I'm on. Yeah, okay. I should stash all this stuff. Um, we do not want this affecting us right now. And let's see what the other ones were. SDL2. I'm doing some... Um, nope, I want a stash. Uh, where is it? I'll focus on this for a couple of seconds and <laughs> I'll explain what I'm doing. Um, and the other stuff doesn't matter. So that's fine. So yeah, I've been working on the last week a bit on the GL context side of things. So um, shared contexts and... What did I do? I did actually something that was relevant. Sure, I did something that was useful this last week. Also, I was at a demo party this weekend, so I was doing some coding, but I was doing it drunk. So most of it isn't... We'll need review, let's say. Um... <laughs> hey, DBTD. DBTD. Right. <laughs> Just checking the chat, see what's going on. If Twitch allowed me to disable chat, I'd stream to YouTube and Twitch, no problem. Ah, man. Yeah, I know. It, it, it's, it's a pain. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the changes I've made that will be available next month's release. Uh, I've um, changed Keppel's hosts, so you will only get core context now. And um, it will search backwards from GL 4.5 to check which version your machine actually supports. So we have no hacky special cases for OS X now, or Mac OS or whatever the fuck. Um, and um, yeah, same for Windows. I had some people report some issues on uh, one of the more recent Intel um, embedded GPUs. And so I, I got an Intel Nook, which should have had the same GPU, but I don't have that problem. So I don't know if it's a driver update or something like that. We should see. Um, so yes, there has been some progress this week. Not a lot, but a little. Play with it. Let's see if this still works. I don't know how much visual stuff we're going to get done this week. And let's say, looking at the paper, I've had a quick skim to make sure it wasn't completely insane. Um, there are a few places where I think I'm going to get stuck for a short amount of time. So I'm thinking maybe we'll get some stuff done this week and we'll finish it off next week. Most likely that's going to happen. Uh, yeah. Come on, let's go to the right package. Ah, no, actually it works. Cool. Right, well, we'll leave that over there. And we will go find the paper. Boom. And this is where we're going to start working from. Now, how is that font size for you? DPTD is just... <laughs> the name's a little silly, but it is just tricky to say at high speed. Um... Entropy ad, demo party, cool. Yeah, it was Suskogan over here um, the last weekend, which was fucking great. It just one of those, such a mellow party. Really, really nice and some, oh, bitching. Anyway, it was it was really cool. Um, <laughs> Shimara, it's exactly how you say it is, except not. Um, I'm getting strange links. I probably... Smart ways to use poetry in a street fight. Awesome. Save that one for later. Um, good font size. Thank you very much. Could be bigger, to be honest. All right. Hey, young Lena. Good to see you. Um, let's see if we can get... Let's just do 110% and... Maybe a little more. Yeah, I'll be fine. Can work with this. And yeah, let's start going through this paper. So... We're going to skim around a bit on this, but, um, yeah, it should be fine. Let's, let's just see how we go. And I think as we hit equations, if we understand them, we'll write them into code just to get it done. Um, and then, ah, fuck it. We'll, we'll work this out. We'll work this out as we go. Okay, so the general idea is we want to erode terrain. And this is, this first bit is the abstract, which is pitching the whole idea of like, hey, erosion is cool. Um valleys, riverbeds, and all this kind of stuff. So we want to simulate a couple of things. Thermal erosion, which is like based around the idea that there's kind of 
heat and cold changes and stuff like this, which is going to cause things like rocks and stuff to be broken apart. And then things are going to travel downhill. So basically there's a certain gradient um, above which stuff is going to tumble down the hill and form piles. So we're going to have to take um, soil, rocks and stuff and move it down the terrain. Um, and then there's hydraulic erosion, which is based on rain. So stuff is going, rain is going to hit the ground. Some of the ground is going to get dissolved or carried in that water. We say dissolved in the papers. And then that water is going to flow, and then eventually in these systems they you they term it evaporation, which is where the water releases the soil and it's deposited somewhere else. And this should give us enough to get some fairly realistic looking terrains. Um, and it's not it's it's not a hundred percent accurate. There are some there are some parallels to real geology, but again. Um, Evaporation is not going to hold as big a part in this, in, sorry, in real life as it does in here, because evaporation in this is the only way for us to lose water in this system. Um, it's a simplified model, so a little bit of a prerequisite. May as well talk about that quickly. We are going to be working with height maps. So we're going to have a 2D plane, which is going to be split up into a big old grid, and each vertex in there is going to have a height. So we'll end up with some kind of terrain, but in 3D, of course. And then for every one of these vertices, we're going to have a height. Dun, 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 like this. Of course, they'll be evenly spaced out in the actual terrain, whatever. And because the height is just a float, we can store this very easily in a texture. So we're going to have a big square texture um, where the color of each pixel in the texture is going to be a floating point value uh, which is how high the terrain is there and then what's kind of cool if you think about erosion what we're saying is we're going to take a little bit of this height let's do a big extreme example like this we're going to take a bit of the height off here and we're going to add a bit of the height down here and if you do that over time this top bit is going to get lower and these bottom bits are going to get a bit higher and so it's a kind of smoothing algorithm. It's a kind of blur, but it's a directional aware blur. So it's a gradient blur or something. There's probably a good term for it, um, but yeah. Um, people are talking about PDF viewers and yeah, I just use events on every platform. I think it's excellent. It, it just does the job. Um, I should make a NURBS render instead. No, <laughs> rasterized stuff is totally uncool and really effective and fast. <laughs> I think I'll stick with the thing that I've worked really hard to get working for now. Maybe one day we'll do curves and stuff, but eh. That's what tessellation's for. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Keep cheating. Right. Um, what gets rid of all this stuff? Yes. Okay. So back to the paper. Okay, so this part is all just introducing the idea of hydraulic erosion and thermal erosion. And then it's pitching the idea that uh, GPUs are cool. We should use GPUs to do stuff. <laughs> Shavara, no, throw everything out the window. <laughs> yeah, I bought a couple now. Restart. Um, so yeah, GPUs are cool, apparently. It's good to know. Um, and then it starts talking, as these papers always do, about previous work, which is great. And they talk about um, a couple of the different approaches that were using physics-based simulations and things like this. And some of them were very iterative, so you would have a droplet of rain somewhere and you'd let it walk down the terrain, taking things with it. And you would do this over a large number of iterations and you would get erosion. Uh, we're going to do everything in parallel because that's what we want to use GP GPU for. I mean, this we'd like this to be real-time, really. We want to do real-time erosion and be able to play with all this stuff because it will be cool. But that does affect how we write our algorithms because um, some of the previous work um, we'll see later when moving water or terrain downhill, you might have two spikes. So let's, rather than me waving my hands like some kind of muppet, let's get back to a place we can doodle. Say we have this is our terrain. So we've got a couple of high points and we got a low point. Now, 
During the erosion, we're going to dump some of the height from here down here. But if we dumped a load of it at once, we might end up with this. We end up with this, and now this point, middle, is higher. And now this is going to dump soil onto these two, which could make those slightly higher again. And this, is, um, this results in oscillation. And you'll see in the paper it mentions oscillation. That's kind of annoying, because you have to wait for that system to stabilize. Maybe it doesn't. All these kind of things. So um, we're going to have to... One of the ways they avoided that in some of the more iterative papers is it would take the soil from here and dump it down and then take the soil from here and dump it down if this was still lower. So, I mean, that's not exactly realistic because, I mean, like, things are happening in parallel in real life. But it, it did work and it gave them stable results. But we won't be able to do that because otherwise we throw away so much of the advantage of using the GPU. Namely, we can do everything in parallel. This balls fast. Right, so GPUs are cool. Here's some stuff that's been done before. Let's talk erosion. And then they say, we're going to make it better because this is paper and we've got to validate ourselves. Um, let's check the chat because I'm distractible. Um... <laughs> Pond of them. Would be cool if we had a library that allows some G us to do GPU programming common list. Hmm. That would be handy. Um, and then obligatory Lisp is dead. It's 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 good that it's dead. It's never been so good. Some things were just made to die. Um what I've learned from science, yeah, Shamira saying, what I've learned from science, if you aren't using Monte Carlo in a simulation, you're doing something wrong. I, yeah, I, I need to actually, I've done a little bit of work with stuff that's taking a kind of Monte Carlo approach to um, to lighting. I haven't, I, I haven't got that pattern ingrained enough in myself that I would know like when to when to throw it at something. But, um, but yeah, like, definitely get the idea. Nukes, that's what it's for. It's all for nukes. Okay, so erosion model. Let's talk about how we're going to do erosion. And this is like how we're going to simulate it. So basically, a lot of this today is going to be re me reading through things and trying to work out what it means. So feel free to join in, paint or whatever you need to do in, your <laughs> in the time in between. Um, okay, so a hydraulic erosion uh, model is an improved version of stuff by someone else. Works on a 2D uniform grid. Yes, that's fine. We're going to use one of those. And uses the following quantities. Okay, so here are some terms that we are going to need. So, what happens if I just grab these? Copy. Oh, yeah, let's grab everything. Man, this is why I use keybindings for everything, because I'm terrible at mouse. Not that Emacs is good, it's just I'm useless. Right, so, play with that terrain. Let's... Um, in package paper birds. Okay. So, we have, get rid of that. Terrain height is B, water height is D, suspended sediment is S, water outflow flux, which we'll get to soon are some things cool right we're going to need these notes later because one of the shitty things about papers and maths papers in general i just can't stand is that it's just single letter variable names for everything and i have no short-term memory so i'm just useless at keeping track of what these things are meant to mean but anyway terrain height is b water height is going to be d so d is depth b is i don't know but i'm just gonna have to remember that one um basin Suspended sediment out S, that's at least vaguely useful. Flux, I guess that's going to be flow of some kind. Um, water outflow, yes, cool, so that's fine. And a velocity vector V. These values are updated in each iteration. Okay, so we're going to be going over multiple steps to update the simulation. That makes sense. Uh, the simulation iteration consists of the following five steps. Water incrementation due to rain or water sources. The amount of rain in every cell is going to go up by some amount. Flow simulation using shallow water model, whatever that means. Computation of the velocity field and water ch height changes. Yeah, because we need to work out what speed water is traveling at to work out how much earth it might chip away when it hits something. Um, like, yeah, slow moving water is going to erode stuff less. I think it should do. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, simulation of the erosion deposition process. 
cool. Transportation of suspended sediment by the velocity field, cool. Uh, water evaporation, fine. Okay, so now we get into numbers. Oh, look at all these. These will be good. Right, so these steps are each executed in each iteration step, gradually changing the state variables in each cell. Um, okay, so let to, all of these variables that we mentioned up here can have t after them, which mean which is the their value at a given time. So let's just say now. So like that is the current value. Delta time. Sorry, this is a triangle is delta. So a change in time is the time step. Fine, we'll have a time step. In the following, we summarize the calculations producing the next values at the time t plus delta time. Yeah, so the next time step. So we're going to talk about b now and b in a future bit. Or this might be in the previous b and the next b. Whatever. That, that kind of thing. The next step is what it is. So since the model calculates some variables um, in two or more steps, we'll use subscripts. One, two, etc., to uh, distinguish these intermediate bits and bobs. Okay, so yeah, let's actually do something. First, we simulate the effects of water arriving at the terrain surface. Unlike someone else's work, which we haven't read, uh, we use constant, some constant function uh, for the rain rate, and we distribute the water falling down the surface. So basically, every cell on the grid, we are going to add rain. So the first thing we're going to need is some grid. So we'll have to make that. Uh, we're going to store all this data in textures. We'll probably start with just a 512 by 512 map. We can make some noise to perturbate it a little. And we're going to need one at least for the height map. So we're going to need the heights. We're going to need water depth. What are the other things? Um, let's go back up here. Da -da -da -da. So this is one, two, three values. So we could store this in a vector. And here's four values, so that's another vector four. So this is one texture, two textures, and a velocity vector, three textures. Okay, so we're going to need three textures. So let's let's start farting around with some of this stuff. So def class, and this will be I don't know, terrain state maybe. Yeah, it's just yeah, let's do that. And then we have. Um, Height water sediment map. Because I'm not going to use these names. So it's height water sediment map. Man, that's a long name. But it's not a one letter name, which is way better. Um, init form will work out what the initial value is going to be in a minute. And we need an accessor function for that. Cool, right. And this is going to be, we're going to need, basically, we're going to need a texture. We're also going to need to write into our textures because we're going to update a load of things. And then the values are going to be written to somewhere. So we're going to need an FBO. So I don't think I'm actually going to set this with the init form. We're going to have to set this in some other function, some constructor function. So, um, yeah, let's do that. Give it that name. And then the other thing was, so this is going to be height, water depth. Depth is tricky because that could mean into the screen, but yeah. We'll, we'll manage to keep our heads around it. Sediment, water outflow flux. So um, outflow. So it's a water map. That's what it is. It's a water map. No, it's a... Uh, let's do, call it a flux map. I'm sure I'm going to confuse myself with this later, but never mind. An accessor is going to be the water flux map as well, which we don't need to do that. Okay, so that's two textures, and then a velocity vector. Um, water velocity map. And I can't spell accessor, I think is what's happening here. Is that right? Ah, we'll see soon enough. Right. Blah, 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 blah. Keyword argument is not assembled. Um, yes. 
Did I have that right to begin with? Oh, there right. was something in here. Have I been... Oh, I've just been really done with my... Really done with my nesting. Usual stuff. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so we've got a type for that now, and then we're going to need a constructor. Make terrain state. And we're going to make an instance of terrain state, and we are going to need to fill in some values now. Height water sediment map is going to be a texture. And as usual, I need to slime enable um, current hints so we get stuff while this is running. We'll need to change that soon into a terrain rather than just a square. Oh, lost the button for a second. See what's going on over the chat while I've been ignoring you. Ah, bird. Good to see you, man. It's like stupid early in the morning over there, isn't it? <laughs> Lazy French Kiwi. Awesome. Yeah, I thought you were the one over in... Uh... <laughs> Looks like I'm dominating the chat. I think you're helping. <laughs> right. Before I get too distracted, get this done. Right, so make texture. What are we going to need? We're going to need some initial contents, which we don't know what they are yet, so we'll ignore that. We're going to get some dimensions in here, which is going to be 512 by 512. Um, we're going to need an element type. Now, I'm actually going to skip a little further forward in this paper, because they give some useful information later. <laughs> Just after you've understood everything, then they start giving you useful stuff for implementing it. Okay, so our implementation, the cell structure is represented by a 2D four-channel floating point texture. So that's the core key point here. We want floating point textures for our heights and shit like that. Um, stacked upon each other, um, attached to a single frame buffer object. Kick ass. Texels are the same position um, in texture layers from one cell containing all the simulation variables, blah, blah, blah. Basically, yeah, we're going to have... We're going to use the textures together. Um, we calculate one iteration using... Oh, yeah, so w um, with two such frame buffers, we calculate one iteration using one of these buffers as an input, another as an output. So we're going to have two of these identical terrain states. We're going to populate one, then we're going to process it into this one, and then we'll process... Then we'll do the next step on this one and write the results into this one. You can't read and write to the same textures, for probably understandable reasons. Um, so we're going to need to do this. We need to write somewhere and then we need to, yeah, write it back in the other one. Uh, <laughs> Please calm down. How's the filter for the adult in the room, man? <laughs> I'm not helping. Fan laser or terrain, um, erosion leads naturally to games. Yeah, it's really cool, actually. Again, content creation is such a big thing in games, and I don't believe in procedural, like, stuff being output being the final thing that you stick in your game, but I do believe in procedural tooling. So stuff like um, Substance Creator and Substance Painter and stuff like that. Badass tools. So cool. Right, I don't need to be on this screen. I need to be on this screen. Damn it. There we go. Right. So, we're going to have frame buffers. We're going to flip-flop between them. Um, and then they say something down here that is vaguely useful. Where is it? Ba, 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 ba. I they mentioned something about passes. I'm pretty sure they did anyway. Here we go. The iteration process is implemented in a single fragment shader that runs in three passes on a full-size quad rendered over the entire frame buffer. Now that's all simple stuff, but they don't mention 
where those passes begin and end. So that's going to be one of the things that probably slows us down a bit, is working out where the gap... Well, like, we're going to run three fragment shaders, essentially, I think. No, they actually say it's implemented in a single fragment shader that runs in three passes on a full-size quad. What? Okay, I don't entirely understand that. We'll work it out later. Let's go back up to where we were. Up here somewhere. Pages away. Three whole pages. It's going to take a while. Right. Anyway, yes, we were getting set up, weren't we? Um, so it's terrain state. The element type is going to be um, one of the floating point textures. Um, actually, we can just use vector 4. That will... That should... Yes, that should use a floating point texture. That's fine. So that's the... Um, the height water sediment map, the water flux map can also be a floating point texture, and the water velocity map, yeah, why, why not? We, we don't have we don't have to worry about um, memory usage yet. So let's just uh, let's make them all full 32-bit floating point textures, and we'll go from there. Let's see if this works at all. That's quite wide. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. This is why you don't use big names on a stream. Does he have so little real estate? Right. Um, is that enough? There we find. Okay. Ripple. And. Um, terrain state zero. One. Cool, let's try and make a terrain state and see what breaks. Nothing breaks. Well, that's new. Uh, terrain state zero is one of them. Let's inspect it and see what we got. Okay, we got three textures. That makes sense. Let's take one of those down here and get the element type of that, which we can see even though we specified it as a vector four, because Kepler allows us to use either the Lisp type name or the um, image format name. When you inspect the element type of the texture, it's always gonna give you it in the Im image format terms because that's the GL way of specifying things. So this is an RGBA, which is four component, 32, which is 32 bits, F floating point texture. There's French going on in the chat. That's it, shut it all down. I'm, I'm, I'm confused, therefore it's wrong. Um... <laughs> Borderlands t-shirt, yes! A friend was working in the testing department, so I got it for free. I really should play the game at some point. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> right, so we have a terrain state which we can use. I'm not going to make the second one yet because I don't know if this is right. But it'll be fine. Uh, oh yeah, and, and this rendering on the right-hand side is a bit gash, but what shall we do about that? Shall we change that now? Maybe. Ugh, no, we don't want that, we want things. Here we go, the floor. So this is what we have at the moment. Let's leave that working while we copy and paste it and make some terrain. Um, so that's fine, we'll use the dirt again for now. Um, it's it, So we're making a... Um, some terrain mesh. Let's just, ah, yeah, that's fine. Let's just call it terrain. Um, or object. No, no, call it terrain. It's fine. We'll have terrain state and terrain. That's fine. Okay, so we have a stream which is holding the stream of vertices. At the moment, it's just a box, but we need to change this. Do we have a lattice? One of these yet? Nope. So I'm just going to make a help, copy one of these helper functions. Copy and paste. I are programmer. I must be a programmer because I'm not copy pasting it from Stack Overflow. I'm genius! Right, um, lattice. Uh, yeah, that'll be fine. And we'll work out the arguments for this in a second. It has a key, we'll work out that very soon as well. If it's already in there, then we just use it. That's fine. Oh yeah, so the primitives, We've I think we have a lattice. Yeah, lattice GPU erase function. 
which takes a width, a height, x and y segments. Um, that's fine. So we'll do width, height, um, x seg, which is, let's say, oh, we're going to do 512. So we'll just set this as the default for now. Y segments, 512. So we'll put them there. Um, width, height, x segment, y segments. And then we'll come down and call this function with width, height, x segments, x seg, y. No, segments with y seg, fine. Normals, T, texture coordinates, T. Yeah, we weren't gonna be able to use those ones, but it's just gonna waste a little bit of memory and we don't care. So that'll be fine for the key. I don't think it's gonna clash with anything for now. That's fine. Right, so we should make this better at some point. Another week, another week. So lattice should now work. So we can, over here, instead of a box, we're gonna make a lattice and it has some optional arguments. The width is going to be 512 and 512 in GL units because we'll keep all the units the same. The X segment is or is default, but we'll specify it anyway, 512 and 512. What an informative function. Right, and then we've got a sampler, which is our texture, which we're gonna keep using our scale, which we're gonna leave at one because why change that? Um, that's that type made, make terrain. We're gonna make an instance of terrain. We're gonna push it into the things. Fine, that's good. An update. We don't need to do anything in update. So we'll just do that for now, in case we need to come back. Now in this branch, we don't need this floor. So let's delete that code. Um, and let's try make terrain. Hey, we got a big old terrain. And then we can look at the things list. See, we've got two items in there. We only really need the first one. So let's um, set of things to be the list of the first of things. There we go, that's gone. And garbage collect will clean all that up. So that's fine. Cool, so visually we've got something there. Uh, but we're not actually going to be playing with the visuals for a while, anywho. And we're playing with your minds instead. Right, so we got to there. Let's have a look at what's been going on in chat. Big old terrain! Yep. Um, <laughs> hey, Jace. Entropy out of it seems like I'm quiet. Not because I'm tired of... Oh. It seems like I'm quiet it's because I got tired of chat not being English. Man up! We can chat in whatever language. It'll be fine. I won't understand any of them, but... <laughs> it just makes it easy to ignore the rest. Allowed to chat in the lodge band. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um... Lattice has got two Ts. Ah, fuck. Has it? Don't say that. I bet it has now as well. L A T I C E. Well, dicks. Okay, so that's going to be a uh, a bug. <laughs> Please fire that um, if you have time. Actually, can you go and file that as an issue on the Nineveh uh, package? Because I will have um, misspelt lattice everywhere now, and I'll need to uh, fix this. <laughs> Deeper to D is asking uh, what the fuck is going on. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just sketching out stuff that I think I'm going to need for this terrain uh, algorithm. The idea is we're going to have a height map. And every iteration, we're going to take high points. We're going to compare two points. And if they're below a certain angle, we're going to make take some of the height from the high point and move it to the low point. And that's going to simulate stuff falling downhill. 
And that's a basic kind of erosion, like a thermal weathering, as they call it, or thermal erosion in the paper. We're also going to do things being dissolved into water and flowing around. So what we should end up with at the end of all this, and the end of this week or two weeks or whatever, look like it's going to be two weeks, seeing as it's taken me nearly an hour to get to here, um, is that we will have a big old terrain we generate, and then we will apply rain, and it will weather, and we'll get rivers and lakes and all this stuff for free. It will just happen, which will be kick-ass. Um, there's a lot of French, just a lot of French going on. Please use Tempest Vardim. Um, okay, right. <laughs> what is going on? Right, back to the code. I can't trust you people to be talking sense. Let's do this. So, we got to the point where we were talking about rain. Rain is going to be constant. Cool. So we're going to have some kind of rain function. D from G. Rain. We're going to call it and it's going to return some amount. Let's say... 1? 0.1? I don't know. Actually, I think I saw further down in the paper they had... Like, when they did their tests. Oh yeah, here it is. They have a whole bunch of data that they used. Let's see if we can take this and stick it down here so we can get some sensible default values. Oh no. <laughs> oh I love PDF, it's so useful like this. Um, so time integral, rain rates, virtual cross-section area, we'll get to that. Gravity is G, KC, KT, thermal erosion rate, and then I'm hoping that these were the values for that. So in which case this is Time increment. Oh, this is going to be tedious. There's probably a great way of doing this in Emacs. Like, oh yeah, the, the PDF table to markdown extension to Emacs that I just don't know about. But right now I don't know about it. So this will have to do. Inconsistent spacing for the pain. Just to get some kind of idea of what to be using in these things and helps if you cut it before you try and paste it. Life advice. And I know a lot of these are just gibberish right now, that's fine, it's just that we haven't got to that part of the paper. And I knew this was in there somewhere, so I wanted to get this stuff noted down now. And someone complaining about Unicode and code. I actually, when I'm transforming stuff from papers into um, into GLSL, especially, like I end up using Unicode symbols in the code for at least a, <laughs> until uh, people have to deal with it, because most of the time I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get something that works and I'm comparing. Oh, that's annoying. Comparing um, the names you've made up for something and the one letter names that they have, like alpha in the um, original papers, is super annoying. And so it ends up being less annoying just to use some Unicode in your source until you've got things working. Oh, anyway, just type it. One, five. That's not five. That's a five. 0 0.8, 0 0.1. Cool, right, now we've got some values that we can steal. So this, when they did their experiments later on, um, they use these values. Um, so we're gonna just use them for now. So um, time increment, blah, 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 we'll deal with that later. Uh, rain rate, oh, they had a very low rain rate. Let's, let's use that. And the reason I'm making this a function is just because later on we might choose to make the rain more advanced. We might want to have rain, the, the quantity of rain is dependent on the direction of rainfall and the slope that it's landing on. So it's better just to have this as a function right now. So back to the paper somewhere. Come on, up here. Nope, further up. We're on this first page still. 
Okay, so we have some constant amount of rain. Um, the rain rate specifies the water amount given um, arriving at a particular cell during time. Blah. This gives us more balance and finer grain results in the long run. And water height is updated by the following thing. So this is how we get the new water height. Let's go and dump that in and translate this into something that's manageable. Okay. So. And we can totally chop and change these functions later, so we don't have to be too smart about this. So D1 is going to be the result of this function. D1 at position x, y. So there is a um, position, which is going to be a vector 2. We've got some current value. Um, so this is the rain at a given position at a given time. So, um, so th that's the amount of water. So... water at pos plus and then we have some time delta which is going to be a float and I'm going to try not to use too much unicode in this for everyone's sanity but not mine um, so we're multiplying the time delta by the rainfall at a given place, so this is um, this is actually meant to take a position, so we just ignore it. Vector. So we're going to call rain for the position, multiplied by kr apparently, whatever kr is, which we're going to find out in a second. Um, rain rate. Oh, that's what? No, that doesn't seem quite right actually. Hold on. KR is rain rate. And R was... Oh, this is just some function. We use the constant rain rate for each cell. And then they say rain rate is KR. KR is a global simulation parameter that scales the rate of the water increment. So KR isn't rain rate. It's rain scale. Ah, that's annoying. Um... Scale factor. Rain rate scale factor. And this is where names just start getting confusing. Anyway, so we'll do this. We can probably make these constants, actually. Uh, no, we might want to change them. Let's just make them. Uh, what do we do? Yeah, let's do this. Rain rate scale factor is going to be 0.012 apparently is what they use. And I'm just going to say the rain is 1. 0.1 per iteration everywhere. Why not? I don't know what our units are. Could be meters. That would be like 10 centimeters of rain or something. Um, that's a lot of rain, actually. Anyway, we'll get there. So we do this. Now we can use this variable in our shaders because magic. Um, so it's time delta times rain amount times the KR factor, which is this. Wow! Explosion! Required argument is not a symbol. That is true, because this is not a GPU function. That will freak that out. There we go. Um... <laughs> God damn it, Baron. For, for being that early in the morning, you can seriously put out a lot of bizarre puns. Um, a scale of rate is still a rate. Yeah, but we have a rate that's coming from the rain function, surely. If it's scaled, it's sleep. Get out! <laughs> okay, let's, uh, oh boy. Love it. Okay, so then, um, global simulation parameter, blah, blah, blah. And then the result from this is D1. Um, the, is the intermediate value of the water height. Fine. Then we calculate the flow between cells. And this is an interesting thing. So the way they do this is they say that every cell, this is this is going to be our, what our terrain is essentially uh, 
essentially saying. We've got, um, we're going to have some height over the ground and we're going to have some water on top of that ground. And then we're going to have to flow this water in certain directions. Um... <laughs> Oh, you two are so in sync. I just love Podifum and Barada on it right now. Um, so the water has to flow between cells. And so what they say is there's these virtual pipes, which is a really weird way of explaining it, but whatever. There's a pipe going this way and left and right and down from a given cell. So doodle. Where's the doodle thing? Here we go. Right. So this is our cell right now. What a lovely color. Um, and this is the left cell and the they call this the up don't they? Oh no, they call it the top and the bottom cell and the right cell. And so they have pipes and we're trying to work out this flux, the flow um, towards the left, towards the right, towards the top, towards the bottom. Yeah, and they call these virtual pipes and they give the pipe an area which specifies how much water can flow down that virtual pipe per iteration, which is kind of weird, but sure. I guess you've got to talk about it in some way. So that'll do. Um, so this is what we're going to be doing. And in total, this stuff is all about F, which is the flux. Um, and then this seems to be, I believe, the sediment stuff here. It seems to have numerous virtual pipes, but I'm not going to get into that because I'll just confuse myself. So yeah, we need to work out water flow. So let's look at what the paper says. I'll get rid of these doodles. Not that way, because that's not how that works. Um, and we will continue. Okay, so what was the last thing this said? Then we'll calculate the water flow between cells. Each XY cell has four virtual pipes to the neighbors, um, which transport water out from the given cell. Neighboring cells also have four virtual pipes, of course, because every cell on the grid is going to have neighbors, uh, transporting water in opposite directions. So there's a pipe going from... Doo -doo -doo, where's the buttons? to do right that way and there's also water flow going that way and there's going to be differing water pressure between these two things uh, based on height of the ground and height of the water and all this kind of stuff and when there is an imbalance in flow then water is going to flow one way so it's going to flow into the other cell and that's how we're going to get transportation of water across this grid makes some kind of sense yeah if this is all gibberish but I think this is okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it so far, but it might just be because I cheated and looked a bit of this last night. I always worry with papers because you can pick up a paper and the conclusion is, oh, we were totally wrong. <laughs> so it's like, we needed to read through it and make sure they had something that worked first. But this, uh, but this looks okay. And then we get into another formula. So the, the water outflow flux is updated with the pressure difference between interconnected cells. Let's donate F to be those four pipes. Fine, sure. Um, the outflow flux is given in X, Y cell. Okay, so yeah, FL is the outflow to the left, um, which is X minus one, sure. And these are ones that are gonna be X plus one and Y plus one and Y minus one, yada, yada, yada. We calculate the change of FL as this thing okay so this is the flow to the left at the next iteration time step which is just the next bit is at least zero but probably more and it's the current flow to the left plus some delta time here multiplied by everything's can be scaled by delta time. So we're going to see that a lot. The area of the virtual pipe multiplied by, so it's going to be multiplied by the area because the bigger the pipe, the more water that can flow. So then we've got G here, which is gravity. Um, we've got the difference in height to L, I think. So yeah, here we go. Delta HL is the height difference between the left and the current cell. Okay, yeah, so the height between here and here. Now is it, oh, between the left and the current? That matters because it's going to be left minus the current rather than the current minus left. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's going to be right. Okay. Um, cool. So, yeah, we're... we're well, yeah, so this is really easy, actually. This is saying the height difference multiplied by gravity. Which is cool. So, like, if there's a load of water up here, if the water's falling from a long way, we multiply it by gravity to see how fast that's going. Then we scale that by the error of the virtual pipe. We divide this by L, which is the... something. is the length of the virtual pipe. Now, this I don't really understand. I guess for us, because our grid is one unit between every cell, then our L is just one. I guess that would matter in, yeah, of course, if you were doing this, this would actually have to matter with units and things like this. So if you're trying to do things in a, if you're simulating actual water depth and things like that, that would matter. Okay, yeah, okay, so we need to, let's sketch out this function at least so we've got something like this. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. How do we copy just a bit? <laughs> I guess the answer is we're not going to do that. Um, we're just going to have to flip backwards and forwards a lot. Uh, flow left is going to take some stuff. So it's... Oh, you're going to get annoying, actually, if we keep doing that. Hmm. I'm going to remove this window and put that down there so I can just switch between these two quickly. Um, am I in the right place? Yes, I am. Cool. So, max of zero and uh, the current flux to the left. The current... Yeah, FL is the outflux flow to the left neighbor. So, current flux to left. Um, we're going to need a position. Get back to. So, the left of this to the left of this kind of descriptive. So, that's cool. Um, then this is going to be added to multiply time delta again. So we're going to need our time delta over here. Multiply by the area. Multiply by something else. So pipe virtual. Ah, oh, can't type. Virtual pipe area and be careful making all these noises because the one thing I've learned from podcasts eventually people get enough to just remix it into something dreadful um, divided by so again multiply gravity and then it's the height diff from pos to um, pos and I'm going to do plus because it just is easier to read in the end right and then all divided by pipe length virtual pipe length keep things consistent so that's roughly what that formula was, I think, and we'll have to flesh all this out later. Current flux to left of, um, uh, yeah, hmm, wonder if we can do, actually height diff would be good, if we've got the position we don't need to pass in. We can just pass in this. We'll have the function, height diff function, take a position and an offset cell to look into. Um, we'll get to that later. So we've got virtual pipe area and virtual pipe length. You know what, I'm gonna be lazy. I'm gonna shove these into global variables for now. Uh, def var, virtual pipe area, what do they use? 20, done. Def var, 
virtual pipe length. One. Sure. Let's check the chat while I ignore you people. Da, 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 da. Okay. Ooh, Jeebus. How many people we've gotten tonight? This is really cool. I love seeing all this chat, by the way. Um, Young Lena, is erosion a common thing to simulate in video games? Um, it might. You probably wouldn't use this in the video game itself unless you have a particular mechanic that required that. But making big realistic terrains takes a lot of effort. One thing you could do is just scan a load of terrain, or you could require your artist to just draw it all. Um, but we we could make an algorithm which we could spend one time. We could just make an algorithm that simulates things kind of well, and then say if you think about um, Mass Effect, and I know this is a bad example because they're. Uh, a lot of their procedural planets got a lot of shit because they didn't do a great job at varying the content. But what you can do is you can generate a level and then to make it more realistic, just run a second of erosion on it and it'll just it'll just soften out a lot of the terrain and make things more realistic and give you rivers and lakes and all that stuff for free. And you know it's going to be vaguely um, true to life because th this simulation is going to let water flow to places where water would sit. So that's kind of cool. Um, so we're going to use something like Perlin Noise, one of the other noise functions that we did other weeks, to generate the terrain. And then, because that's not super realistic, we'll just throw this at it. And it's a cheap way of getting some nice stuff. I like the idea of just generating a load of candidate terrains. Like when you, when, like when you film a movie, you go to a bunch of places and say, oh, we could set the story around here. I like the idea of generating some places and then sculpting, setting out where your story could play out and sculpting the bits to make it fit what you need without having to set every blade of grass or whatever in, in your world. To be honest, it's just kind of cool. So I've been meaning to this for ages. Um, Barad, um, shouldn't there be a friction term in there? I didn't see a friction term in the paper, so I'm not going to try and add one just now. But the nice thing about what I've seen so far in the paper is it does look like you could just extend it quite easily with a load of extra metadata. Um, but water's pretty low friction. I mean, well, you know, as things go. Um, Let's skim down here. Um, young Lena, sorry, yes, I think I've... I hope I've I explained that. Sorry, I saw your second question further down. I should skim through this a bit more. But um, but yeah, it's going to be... Like, I'm probably going to use this static. I don't know. I, it's just kind of fun. Um, DT is shorter back. It's, yeah, but then I have to work, wonder what is DT. Uh, especially when D in this simulation is height of terrain. And it's like, is that D at time now? Um. <laughs> oh, and, and Shimera's already answered all these questions anyway. Oh, that's fine. At least we got it on the stream. Um, but it could be interesting to change the materials, temperature, regime. Absolutely. That kind of stuff we could just add fairly easily. Like, um, w one of the classic things to do straight after this is to add um, a materials hardness. So this does taking to, does have some kind of provision for weakening areas of terrain so it can be eroded more easily. You could totally do that with different materials. So say you had a big, um, like, a, a, like a granite pluton or something like this, uh, could slowly become exposed by the weathering and all this kind of shit. It's really awesome, really awesome. There's, there's so much scope for doing cool stuff. It would just be another way to not make a game engine is to waste all your time trying to simulate the perfect world. But that might be your thing as well, so it's kind of cool. Um, I have seen one game that does use um, kind of terrain building -y kind of mechanics. I think I think there's a couple actually, but um, yeah, I think I think it'd be kind of cool to mess around with time and erosion and stuff in a game. Um, and I'm being sent things. Is a good idea. Bam. That's a nice picture now. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Oh, look at all this beautiful words. Geology has some lovely words in it, right? Sexy subject. Um, right, right. I've reached the end of chat so far. <laughs> now we're now we're into flat and flat earth stuff. I am out. I am going back to the code where I belong. Screw you, people. Um, right. What's missing in here? Oh, nothing complained. Fine, let's carry on then. Um, so that's this function. Cool. Where A is the cross section cross section of the virtual pipe, G is the gravity, L is the length of the pipe. Yada yada yada. All good so far. Wait a second. I didn't mention gravity. How did it not? Shit itself on that. I wonder. Ah, oh, okay. It's because um, some of these functions weren't found, and Kevin was trying to be gentle with the idea that this would they would be compiled later, and then it would fix up this thing. Okay, so current flux to the left of and um, water at isn't defined yet. Oh yeah, we'll come back to that. There's no way for us to really fill that in just now without getting confused. So, too easy for all this stuff to change. Um, okay, height is the height difference between the left and the current cell, which is this, which actually makes, a, I think, a lot of sense. Um... Yeah, that looks that looks good. Let's um, let's knock up that function then. Dfung height diff. Let's put that there actually. Bt bt. Right, so the height difference at a given position to the left of a given position is this. So what I want to do is have a position which is a vec2 and an offset which is a vec2. And then we are going to get the um, pass height and the um, Offset height, that's not a great name, but it'll have to do. And then we will, um, what do they do there? So they've got, ah, so they're doing, they're doing a couple of things here. So it's post terrain height and post water depth. You can see um, B, I believe was, Let's get back to the paper. This is where my memory is shit. B is the height of the terrain and D is the depth of the water. So this is the height of the terrain at the current step of this position. And this is the depth of the water at the current position. Hey, this was the value. F this is D1. D1 was the result from our last function, wasn't it? D1, D1, D1. This one. So that's actually interesting. We're going to have to pass that in. Um, ah, okay. Wait a second. So we need a D1 for both of these. Now it's unlikely that we're calculating all of our neighbors' changes in depth in this fashion. So this sounds like one of the places where it's going to be one pass of a shader. We're going to compute all of this and write it into some textures. And then this is going to be another um, pass reading it back. So offset terrain height, offset water depth. And so these are going to be calls to texture to get values out. But once we've got them, um, we just do minus plus post terrain height, plus water depth and plus of terrain and water depth da, 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 da. and then we can pass in whatever offset we want here but it'll be minus one whatever 
That's cool. So now we just need to work out what these are. So this is going to be a chord texture. We're going to be sampling from some texture. We don't know what it is yet. So this is going to be... Um, that's interesting, actually. Now, we have we know that our textures that we're using, we're going to have a height, water, and sediment all stuck in one thing. So we need... So it's going to be the height, water, sediment map, which is in the sampler 2D. Um, and so this is going to return a vector. Let's make sure I get this right. So let's put a star here. Let's do um, cost data, which is texture, height, water, sediment, at position. Oh yeah, we can fit all that with one line. Nice. And then offset blah, data, which is the same damn thing, um, at offset at, sorry, plus pos offset. And then we have to set all these. Now, our terrain height is going to be the first thing. So this is going to be x of pos data. Um, our water depth we'll put in the y. Um, our terrain height, again, so this is the same kind of thing. Offset data. I think this is roughly what we'll end up with. Something like that. Cool. Did I miss anything out? That's a little long. Let's move that down to the next line, just for... Just for consistency. Current water at not found when compiling this calc new rain. Um, yeah, there's some stuff cascading around there. That's one of the areas where Kepler doesn't give great messages. Current flux to left of was not found when compiling flow left. Yeah, that's fine. So now this... Um, We have this function, but we're still missing some other functions. And we'll get to them in time. That's fine. We'll get that. We'll get that. Let's see what's happening in chat. Da -da 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 -da. Chimera, what? What is going on? Um. <laughs> Young Lena, I'm going to simulate a flat earth and Keppel. Do it. This is the kind of bullshit that this thing is really made for. You've got like real engines out there for doing serious stuff. Let's uh let's keep this for nonsense. <laughs> oh man. Um I need, I need a drink is what I need. Okay, so There is going to be the calculation of these fluxes in the various directions is performed in a similar way. Okay, that's fine. So it's the same shit everywhere. The total outflow should not exceed the total amount of water in the given cell. Which, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I thought that would have. Uh, I thought that was the whole point of max zero, but never mind. If the calculated value is larger than the current amount in the given cell then f will be scaled down with the appropriate k factor. And here is calculating k. Again, the k factor, I'm really glad we know exactly what that means. Um, that's, uh, k factor, whatever the shit this is. This is a GPU function which returns the max of one and some stuff divided together. D1, which was this rain amount over here. But we're expecting that at this point, we've probably done one iteration and we're gonna read it out with texture. So this is going to be this again. Doot, doot.
Um, what was it? Let's do um. Water depth. I think I think this is new water depth, right? D of T, yeah, depth. Depth of T, depth of T, D1 is the new depth, yeah. Even though they say... Why were they saying rain amount? Or did I just make that up? Did I just say rain amount and confuse myself? I think I did. Water amount arriving given cell during time T, yeah. Never mind. Oh, what the hell am I doing? I am not switching. Oh, that's very odd. I'm hitting the wrong button. I'm wondering why. <laughs> wondering why Stump is not doing what I think. Passing math ML and maybe formula in latex would be nice for this sort of thing, even as a first cut. Yes, it would. It really would. If you've got any approach for doing that. Um, outflow flux sure sounds redundant. Does it? Um... It made sense to me that like we, we've got to calculate the potential pressure coming outside of each cell and then we can get the difference between the pressures to see which way the water is actually going to flow and that's going to give us our water velocity field over a given part of the terrain or out of that particular cell. Um, get the position data, like the data from that position. That's ter POS data is a terrible name. I'm going to have to fix that up later. It's probably what they said when they were doing this as well. Um, divided by some stuff multiplied together, which is the water depth. And here's another bit that confuses me. Okay, so LX and LY, where LX, LY are the distances between the grid cells in the X and Y directions. Why is that different from L? L is the length of the virtual pipe. But L is... L only goes in these cardinal directions. It, like if it went in diagonals as well, it would make sense because then it'd be 1.47, whatever. But this is only going forwards, up, down. So the, the length is always going to be the same as the LX, LY. That confuses me. Well, whatever. Um, virtual pipe length. So this is stupid though, I don't want to upload that twice. Right, I'm just going to leave that for now. So it's got to be water depth because... Let's just do this. Let's do this. I'll leave it there. It's fine. Now do it properly. We can, we can fix this later. And then we sum together all of the fluxes from this cell multiplied by delta time. So multiplied by time delta, um, the sum of all the fluxes. So time delta, which is gonna be a float. The L flux, which is gonna be a float. And the this really seems like it should be a vector four. Flux vector four. We're going to have to have some kind of notation for what directions are packed into a vector. So, where is our flux? It doesn't say. Oh, there we go. L, like, so left, right, top, bottom. We'll stick with that convention then. Um, for this, it actually doesn't matter. Is there a GLSL function for just summing up all the components in a vector? I don't think there is. X of flux, Y of flux, Z of flux, W of flux. There we go. Let's space this down, seeing as we're on a rather Space limited screen, that'll do. Not the prettiest, but it'll work. Symbol height water sediment map is undefined. That's very true. Um, oops. Symbol POS is undefined. Also true. Oops.
False data is undefined. Fuck you! It's there, I just am an idiot and I can write it correctly. Shut up. Okay, cool, so that's the k-factor function. We'll find out where we need to call this later. Again, right now we're just amassing shit and we'll, um, we will see what we have once we've gone through, like we've done a first pass through this paper. It's 2120, it's 2120 right now. God damn. Time flies when you're tediously copying things down. Um, how are you folks doing? I didn't realize I've been making you, you've sat here for an hour 20 while I've been doing this stuff and we're on like page two. Um, so yeah, how's it going so far in there? Great. Oh, that's cool, man. I'm glad. I mean, this is what we end up doing when we're doing this kind of work, isn't it? I mean, we sit down, we grab a paper, and we try and make something work. And I think it's nice to get this on the stream. Um, but it's going slower than I thought. I guess a lot of these things do. <laughs> Barad is wide awake. You are just powered by puns, man. That's what keeps you awake. Chimera's drawing. Um, so he loves everything about what he's doing right now. And is just bubbling with enthusiasm about it. Um, Pond of Imp. <laughs> Listening to an English man and reading a Kiwi. <laughs> Either way round would be misguided, but um, but yes. Uh, Van Laser. This is cool. Right on. Um, I'm going to finish off at 10, just because I think that's a kind of good amount of time for a stream. Maybe, maybe quarter past 10. We'll see. We'll see. Um... Chase, good to see, still see you, and uh, yeah, let's carry on. We're um, we're nearly through this meaty bit. This is a lot of the hydraulic stuff now. It looks like we're getting to a big old function down here. Hmm, caffeine. Um, writing two decimals of barrel bricks. Okay, so the outflow flux is multiplied by k. What every outflow flux? Interesting. The calculation is blah, 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 blah. We do all that. And then down here. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. <laughs> Etchabriad, how are you feeling this week? I'm doing good, actually. This is cool. Um, yeah, I, I was I was a bit spaced out last week. Demo party did me good in the end. It was quite nice. And I've been going swimming, which is cool. Um, yeah, last week I was feeling a bit off. It's been, it was strange. And the only thing up with me today is I got stung by a jellyfish. So I'm just, uh, from just itching a bit. It was only a little sting. It was uh, one of the um, big orange jellyfish that sits down here in the o Oslo Fjord. So, um, yeah. Does beer erode to rain in the same way rain does? It's, it's more magical uh, because it's raining beer. And that makes everything more magical. So um, let's uh, focus. Where are we? <laughs> the outflow flux is multiplied by k. So for each of yeah, okay. So all of these are i. So for each of the i's, the flux f l of the next one is equal. Oh, so we just multiply each of them by k. Okay, fine. Fine. Okay, so something is going to be calling k factor a bunch of times d fun g and we have no idea what this function is for yet well it's going to be calculating the flux isn't it so calc flux i thought that's what we were doing up here i mean i know that's only flow left but we need to make current flux to the left of but that uh, i don't know don't oh, know. This is confusing. Oh well, doesn't matter. We'll work it out. So we pack our flux into a vector that goes left, right, blah, 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 whatever it does. Um, so we're going to get flux left. Flux right, flux top, no, top, bottom. I think that's the terminology they use. I forget it in like two seconds. Yeah, T and B. Okay, 
Right, so then we're gonna, that's gonna be something. They're gonna be something, and then they're gonna be multiplied by k. Um, by a k factor. And that's gotta be relevant to that individual one. Yeah, because we got flux here. Flux sediment map at position. Hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that actually. This is here, D1, D1 for both of these. So, man, that really suggests that the new depth, so this, this could almost be one pass, generating all the new depths of water and then generating, then doing this bit where we read the data back out of the textures and, and work out this fluxy flow shit. And then whatever comes after this. It's a bit weird. I don't know. It's a bit odd. Hmm. Let's just assume that's vaguely something. So, calc flux for some position vector two. And this is position and position and position. Oh no, whoops. K factor is the position and oh yeah of course we're gonna have a time delta for everything as well that's gonna be everywhere so that's fine um, time delta and then we're gonna pass in the flux for this one which will be flux left and the height water sediment map but we're gonna read it out of the position so So we're just going to say water height for this position is why water height sediment map. Is that the water height for, yeah, the, the water height for this position, so that's fine. Water depth rather. Ah, oh, I'm going to get confused with those two. I don't know whether to say depth or height or whatever the fuck. We'll do this. That's fine. That's new. And then we'll do flux and what's depth. And so then we're going to have four of these. One, two, three, four. And it's going to be flex. Flex? Sure. Flex the water as well as flux it. Flux right top and bottom. Then we need to work out how to calculate these which is something to do with all this. It's gotta be this, I think. This one. So that's the FL next step of T. Yes, so this is, yes. So we calculate this. And then we multiply it by k. But this uses this, which we've already written. Um, this bit uses the height water sediment map. Oh yeah, that's called that wrong. Um, I wonder if we can, uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so. This is going to take the water depth at that position, which is going to be a float. It's going to take the height water sediment map. And we're going to have to change this flow left into um, something that can take a direction. So like an offset. Um, flow to flow in direction, flow to direction. Uh, let's just call it flow to offset for now because we've used the term offset already. We've already calculated the water depth down here. So we can move this up here and put a star here and pass it in. So we're going to have position, the time delta, the water depth at that position, the map, and then we can do this. So we can get the 
offset, pos. Oh yeah, we're going to need an offset as well. And the offset position is going to be um, current position plus the offset. Makes sense. We'll put star there because we're going to have to use this a few times. This is now going to be our offset as well. We could just park. We can just say this is the um, offset position and pass in the position and the offset position. Um, but we're actually going to remove this. Move it down here. Offset water depth to there. And offset. Ah, yeah. Okay. We. Mm. <laughs> this is a bit shitty. We're gonna move some of these functions out. I think. No, it's. Ugh. Okay. This has got a little uglier than I wanted it to. Um. Oh well. Oh well. Let's just do this. Suck it up. Everything is ugly. Just chopping everything apart. Um, what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, these two... Here. Offset data is going to be here. I'll be back with chat in a minute once I've worked out what the fuck I'm doing. Um, I want. I, I really need to add a macro for destructuring vectors because this is just annoying. Um, luckily, that'll be super simple. Um, okay, so we. Calculate the offset position, we grab the data, we get the terrain and water height out of that. That's fine. That means this function up here is really missing a lot of stuff now. It needs everything passed in. Maybe that's not a terrible thing. We'll see. Yeesh. Whoops. Hello. Oh no. The rarest error in Lisp, an unmatched parenthesis. That's very strange. Of course, this is all meant to be in floats. Screwed up something in here. Ah, something there. Okay. So. I think we're converging onto some heap of crap kind of situation. Yep. Okay. So then when we call the height difference, we're going to call with pos terrain height, pos water depth, offset terrain height, offset water depth, multiply that by gravity, yada yada yada, okay. That makes some degree of sense, I think. Um, flow to offset current flux to left of this is gonna have to be reading out of a texture for sure. Um, what else are we missing? There was something here I was being done about. Oh no. 
Seems like this is the main thing that we've got to clean up is current flux to the left of nonsense. Which is really going to be, so we have our textures earlier. We're going to have a height water sediment map and we we're going to have a water flux map. So I guess we pass in the water flux map here. And then um, and then we can say texture. We're going to put, like look up the, tech, the value in the water flux map. Um, Yeah, this is kind of jank as well. Hmm. All right, we'll get to that in a second. Water flux map. Uh, we're looking up in the offset position. Also, it's un it's possible we're not going to be using texture. We'll probably be using um, what's the other one? Texel fetch? No. What is it called? Where you can look up an individual texel? Might be texel fetch. Don't know. Anyway, uh... <laughs> um, chat's gone mad again. Good lord, there's loads going on. Phil's an abstraction coming on. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to have to. Um, Shamara is making some progress with stuff. By the look of it. Or maybe not. What's, what am I reading? <laughs> Magic. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to try and look at YouTube videos right now. Yeah, you got some cool volcanoes down there, man. Sweet. Go around Rotorua. Rotorua. Everything smells like like Rotorua. Um, there's some Modi thing where you could use to pull in the defunag list for cool. Not sure. Um, yeah, actually, well, I mean, pull it in as, as in like see it because I, I, I visualize it down in the mini buffer, and you can definitely get IntelliSense kind of things. Um, what keyboard do I use? I use one of the old curvy Microsoft keyboards. Keeps my RSI at bay, which is nice. Um, the main, main actually trick to that is just don't use shitty Mac keyboards because they ruin your arms. But um... <laughs> eggs, yeah. Is that what it is? 4,000? I don't know. I don't know what I'm typing on. I just go, that one. That one that doesn't suck. Right. Whew. Microsoft are good at hardware, man. Microsoft are really good at hardware. Or at least they were. They made, like, made that Sidewinder steering wheel that fucking rocked on Windows 98 and I'm still bitter they didn't make an XP driver. Still bitter. Yeah, because I, I give that stuff up easily. <sighs> um, where are we? Oh yeah, this is a, a sucky thing. So there's a couple of things here that are wrong. Um, our offset pos is going to need to be a texel fetch or something like that. Um, and when we look up our flux map, is going to have packed into a single vector all the fluxes. And in this function, we want to know just one of the fluxes for the direction we're looking in. That means we need to get that flux out of that um, out of that vector four, but we need to know the index for that given thing, which is kind of gross. I just don't. I don't know how to do that in the simplest way here because we've got like we pass in an offset, but that doesn't help us. Um, unless unless we do something a bit wafty with. ABS and stuff. Don't know. I don't know. So, for now, I think I'm going to have to pass in a 
I'll just be lazy for a second and we'll just do um, flux index is an int. And this is just going to have to be, uh, where is it? A ref and um, flux index. Symbol gravity is undefined. Very true. Very true. Was that what we're using? Ooh, 9.81. Let's be super accurate. Gravity is still not defined because I haven't given it earmuffs yet. Gravity. Radio. Okay. That function's there now. And flux left is flow to offset, or flux to offset is probably a better name for it, since we're fluxing everywhere. Flux is this and that and this. Flux to offset. Um, I know people love the cherry keys, man. I haven't got into them yet. I guess the ones I've tried have been, the rollover's been so quick that I just don't feel, I'm just, basically I'm really used to this kind of setup. I guess what I need is like fucking Commodore 64 keys. I can just hammer on them like a clueless noob. Um, das Ultimate is really well recommended. I haven't looked at that yet. There's a couple of keyboards that were looking really nice that I was considering getting, but we'll see. Flux index is going to be uh, zero. Offset is going to be minus one, zero. Time delta is going to be time delta. Post terrain height is going to be post terrain height. Post water depth is going to be that. These are going to be long functions. Height water sediment map, water flux map, four of these, four more years. Anyway, um, ah, what am I doing? It wrong is the answer to that question. Always it wrong. Oh man. Debugging this is going to be weird. Flux right is going to be 1, and this is going to be so 1, 2, 3. Um, all the rest is going to be the same. Top is going to be 0, 1, and this is going to be 0, minus 1. So if we pretend all that worked, then we can do this, and it is not bad to have a let with an empty body. That's fine, sure. Um, I'm guessing then, and this has a empty body. Yes, it does. Water flux map is undefined. Oh, why? Because I haven't passed it in? Yes. Water depth is undefined. Where have I said water depth? Oh, just all the way down there. Fuck you! There is no applicable method for k-factor when called with vec2 float float float. Is there not? No! Oh! Okay. Right, that compiles. We don't know if this is the right function in any way, but it compiles. So let's go back to reading because we've got at least written down something that we think it's like. 
Oh, then we've got this to do. Okay, so we calculate the change in water height with adding F out. That can't be with though. It's going to be, we calculate the delta in water height by adding F out, put an F input flow values from each cell. Okay, right, let's uh the total change in height is time multiplied by this, which is time multiplied by all of these things. This might be the third pass they're talking about, because they said three passes, right? Um, it compiles therefore with golden. Yeah, something like that. Um, hmm. So this is, let's just read it. What does it say? The flux to the right at, for the next step at this position. So yeah, this is, this is when you, so all this shit we've been doing here, all this is to get, oh no, that, that is giving us flux T plus Hmm. No, it, oh, this is tricky. Okay, so this is flux to the left, the next value of. Um, and it's left of our current position. But down here, I'm trying to work out if this is, is this that? Or is this the flux to the left? Yeah, look, this is flux to the left coming out of the node to the right of us because it's x plus one. So yeah, this is this is all of the stuff coming in from the other cells. So we've calculated our our, our flux from us in this, right? I think this is going to get, is this going to be one pass? This is going to be a fragment shader. This is going to get written into a texture. And then the next iteration is going to be um, doing all this summing. Um, calculate water height. And that would account for three passes, but we've got a lot more to do. So I don't know how that fits into three passes. It's confusing. Um weird oh and what's this down here oh yeah and, that, and yeah so we oh this is this is strange Add all these flows from the other surrounding cells together, coming at us. And then subtract the flow coming away from us, what we just calculated, for this point. This has to be a separate pass, otherwise I don't know how you parallelize this. Uh, would be great if these guys had some public source code. You know what, I haven't actually checked, they might do. There's probably a public implementation of this. But it, this is like... I wanted to. I wanted to understand these papers. I want to go through and try and work it out. Um, I might get desperate over the course of the next week and just look it up. But um, we'll see. We'll see. This is the. This is the bit I want to get good at. Is because like, I, I, I see people do this. They sit down with like a paper and then they go, "Oh, I'll just implement this thing that I read." And uh, yeah, I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to do. It's, it's that's kind of what this stream is and why I'm doing this stuff now is I want to do graphics. I want to I want to know how to do this stuff. And it's so cool these people write up. I know it's for their courses and shit, but or PhD or whatever they write this stuff up. I've got to be able to use this information, otherwise I'm just forever reinventing stuff or copy pasting. Okay, so we're gonna have. Calc, water, change, or whatever, delta. River delta. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, 
Water flux map. Wait a second, we've, we've got that again, haven't we? Oh, I'm confused. Oh no, that's that was the water flux map from the last one. This is calculating the new water flux map position. So, are we? I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Maybe this updated the, yeah, maybe we, oh, wait a second. If they said three, I'm, I'm trying to work this out. I still got that thing in my head. It's saying three passes. That runs in three passes and a full sized quad rendered over the entire. Two such frame buffer, we calculated one iteration using one of these buffers. They're talking about iterations there. Um, after the iteration, we swap these buffers and start over. Three passes. Ah, I was hoping it was going to be one ping pong, one one right forward and backwards, which would actually count for six draw calls. Which might be enough for all of this, but maybe maybe they're just packing it together right. I need to stay focused. I need to just implement what I see and we'll worry about how it actually fits together later. So we need the flux from the neighboring cells. Um, so let's... Um, Flux left is, we're going to need a position. Water flux map at plus position minus one zero. That's flux left, right, top, bottom. How does anything work? Right. Zero, one, zero, minus one. And then we need um, flux at our position. Because again, I think this is a separate pass and we're just gonna ah, do that. So this is the water flowing away from us. And this is the flowing water flowing away from all our neighbors flux going out and then we're going to add together all the flux that's leaving our neighbors into us and subtract our flux that's going out so it's going to look like minus um, how are we going to pack this so let's look at this where is it Yeah, we're going to look at the flux coming out the left of flux right. <laughs> ah, right. I think we can just do all these together. Um, oh no, yeah, we're going to have to we're going to have to add these together. Right, and then we're gonna get the flux coming out the bottom of the top. So, what's the what's the order again? I can't remember this and fail at the same time. What am I smart? No. So, x, y, z, delta. Um, coming out the bottom of the one above us, coming out the, what did they do next? The left of the one to the right of us. Oh, did I do that wrong? What? No. Coming out of the right of the one to the left of us. Right is Y. The left of us. And that only leaves... Uh, X, Y, Z, which will be coming out of the top of the one to the bottom of us. Okay. Then we multiply the sum of X, Y, Z, W, Z, Y, X. 
cool. Guess it doesn't matter. Ooh, what did we do wrong there? Okay, quiet argument is not a symbol, yada yada. Oh yeah, it's defund and not defund G. That will confuse things. And it compiles. Good enough for now. Okay, what's going on in chat? Delta, I like Delta. Um, what makes that amenable to being implemented as a texture? Um, which bit? Sorry, I don't know when 52, like, yeah. Yeah, basically, when. What was I saying was good for a texture? Was it the deltas? Um. Yay, yeah, chat lag. This is perfect, actually, because I can have a drink. I love chat lag. Yeah, the flux stuff. Cool. The reason... I mean, the first reason is because we know we're doing it on the GPU, we have to write into something. And the only thing we can really write into is a frame buffer. The only thing frame buffers can hold are images from textures. So that's the big clue. But also the nice bit is our textures are a big old grid. We're in this one here. And so we're looking to our neighbors. So all we have to do is add one or you know, subtract one in the various directions. So this is, yeah, minus one, zero, and all the rest for our neighbors. And we could have, um, we could have diagonals as well, but this implementation doesn't do that for the water flow. Um, as you can see, this is their model here, and they only do water pipes, as they call them, um, in these cardinal directions. Sweet. The light goes on. That's it. Yeah, no problem, man. It's uh, it's weird. And the, and the reason they do it in four directions is because they do. There's no there's no reason that we couldn't do it in more. Um, but they have a simulation that is apparently stable-ish. So uh, that'll do. Then we update the water height in the current XY cell. Jesus. Okay, so D2. Man. Right, uh, <laughs> this gets us to delta V, the water height delta. Now we're gonna have to rename these functions because these names are getting terrible now. It's calc new water depth or something for position back two. Um, so then what are they saying? D2 equals D2 for XY. But this is when we're calculating D2. Did we calculate D2 earlier? I don't remember that. We calculated D1. I see no D2. That really only makes sense if it's D2 equals D1 plus that. Do we have D1 mentioned anywhere else over here? I mean, we use it in a bunch of these functions. It's got to be D1, though. It's got to be. I'm going to assume it is. So... Once again, we can... We're going to need the flux pass down here. Oh no, this is, uh, it's wrong! He's wrong! Put it back! Put it back where you found it. Right, um, we need the other sampler that we were using up here somewhere. Where is it? Height, water, sediment map. Such catchy names! But uh, better explanations than C or K. Right, so... Current depth is texture height, water, sediment map at position. Um, and we need to know height is X, Y is W, so that's Y. 
And then we are going to get the current depth and add on the water delta. Taking the water flux map. No, that one. And the position. And I think we divide it, don't we? Yes, we do the divide the water, water delta, um, by that multiplication I don't like again, which was up here. The virtual pipe length stuff. That'll do. That seems to be what they were asking for. Okay, so that would then be this function here, D2. Using outflux, <laughs> outflow flux values, we can calculate the velocity field that is needed to calculate erosion. This is gonna be a three stream <laughs> implementation. I, I can feel it. Jesus, this is tricky when you try and implement this stuff. Uh, DBDD, DBDD. Uh, guys, do you have any recommendations regarding starting with OpenGL? Yes! We actually chatted about this in another stream as well. Um, I recommend either learnopengl.com, um, which is very good, but I recommend more highly a site called Arc Synthesis. You can only get it now as a repo that is on Bitbucket. But if you search for Bitbucket Arc Synthesis, uh, you will find it. And that tutorial is the best because it's very simple C and it, it, it pushes you into some parts of OpenGL which are ugly, but necessary to actually understand what's going on. And it pushes you in just a little bit sooner than you might be comfortable with, but has all the groundwork there. It's really good. The other thing I really should, could do is, um, should, could maybe, uh, do a basic open open gl tutorials using keppel um but i don't know the best way of doing that we we did a few little things one time but they, they weren't the best tutorials maybe we did like big overview of the gl pipeline in keppel but that's probably not the best way to get started i don't know it's up to you like ask me sometime like if you've got ideas of how you want this done let me know and we'll um Yes, we'll we'll do something about it. But it's a little tricky. I mean, like, yes, I, I yeah, do the arc synthesis. Actually, the way I, I started making Keppel was just doing a, a tutorial from arc synthesis in Lisp, and then trying to make it not ugly. And then I kept doing that, and Keppel came out of it. Um, yeah, learnovergl.com is cool. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Okay, so we've got the flux values apparently. Now we can calculate the velocity field um, that is needed to calculate hydraulic um, erosion. That's cool. The calculation of the X component of, wait a second, delta W. What's W? Pardon me, oh, excuse me rather. Delta W doesn't say, okay. Unless I missed it. We didn't do that already, did we? No, I'm pretty sure we didn't. Okay, so this is um, the velocity field or part of the velocity field thing. Okay. I guess we just try and we just implement that. And that's one component. So we need to do that for all four components. Um, we can then calculate C, a transport capacity that represents how much sediment can be transported in a cell. The original C is calculated as blah. But um, we're not actually doing that much really GL specific stuff in this video right now, DPDD. Um, this is mainly just, there's a bunch of maths and we're sticking into lispy kind of functions that happen to run on the GPU. Um, 
we haven't seen any GPU specifics right now, other than that Keppel is making us write types and stuff like this. And I'm mentioning textures because I know a little bit about how I'm gonna, how I want to implement this. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, of course. Infix notation is so much clearer. No, no, it is not. I'm biased, but I've always felt this way. <laughs> but um, B fun G. I don't know what this function is for yet, um, other than calculating W, whatever that is. Um, let's call it calc something. We can work out what that something is later. Um, Then apparently we're looking up flux values again. Um, hey, the fact this is using flux values suggests we might be able to do this in one of the passes we already have because we would have this information probably in the same one as um, we're updating the water height here. So I think this might be all part of one pass, which would be kind of cool. Chimera's drawing things, which I'm not going to put on stream, but I just want to have a look because I'm patient. Cool, man. Good progress. Don't worry about repeating questions. It's going to happen, especially as more people join the uh, chat. It's fine to repeat stuff. It's always helpful. And at the very least, we just get to remind ourselves of things again. Um... Okay, so let's um, let's write this function, and then it is nearly ten past ten. So I'm going to be blurry because that's what happens at about ten past ten. I'm done now. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, and then, oh, don't worry, dude. I'm I'm a noob. <laughs> I'm a noob as well. I'm a bit more familiar with OpenGL's uh, you, um, API, but that's what I'm really familiar with. But the um, but this stuff is all new, and we're just going through the paper. Pom to pimp, I have a question. Shoot! Let's have that question, and I will just start writing this up while you type. Uh, this is like, precedence order for this is going to be minus and plus are the same, right? So we're just doing left to right. So it's minus um, oh yeah flux right we can have a similar situation as we had up here actually After generating the terrain thanks to erosion, is, common to is, is it common to generate a corresponding hitbox for the terrain, or do you rely on the pixels you draw to say this object has reached the floor? Um, actually, you would normally use you can use your mesh for the collision detection, depending on how you're doing um, the collision. I guess like normally I cheat and I just use an existing physics engine, and so then I can hand over my mesh and say here it is and it loads it into whatever its representation is internally. Um, you might wanna cache that in a number of different ways. But um, if you have a terrain that's say 100 units wide and centered at the origin, so it goes minus 50 to 50, um, then you can look up in the texture or if you make it CPU side, you have a big array of heights, right? So then you could say for any given point, you can look up um, what the height is in that array cell. And you would normally, because you'll be part way between two cells most of the time, you'll look up both heights and then interpolate between them. Um, and that will give you the height where your player should be, the height of your ground. And then, yeah, it's up to you really on how advanced your uh, physics 
is? In real life, the answer would be sea level. Okay. Wait a second. Then I'm not understanding something. Um... Oh, I see. It was. Oh, sorry. You're saying it was to simplify the question to Shinmera. That's all right. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to go uh, go about it, but that's um. You could say you could store the height map as a big old two dimensional array and then look up the height in the array, just like querying any array uh, element. Or again, yeah, there, there's a bunch of different ways physics engines might do it, and so I just like I, my answer that would be like give it to the physics engine, let it do it, and then you would cast a ray. So you would say, between here and here have I collided with anything? Or you under your player's feet, you would shoot a ray straight down and it will hit the terrain and you can see like uh, if you're standing on it or if you're far away and all that kind of stuff. Something like that. Typically though, you're not drawing geometry for collision testing simply because it's too complex and detailed. Yeah, like um, terrains are probably one of the cases that aren't I mean, they're simpler than like you want your terrain collision box to, to collision data to be very close to your uh, what you're actually drawing because otherwise people are going to see that difference. But um, it's going to be caching it in some kind of spatial <laughs> spatial aware thing like an octree or something or some kind of spatial hashing algorithm. Um, Yeah, sea level in this doesn't really have to exist, um, Barad, which is nice. Basically, the water flows until the differences be between the neighboring cells' water equalizes. And um, so that can be in a pool higher up or a pool lower down. It really doesn't matter. And then you can just chop away a bit of the ground and the water will flow out of the top hole and into the bottom one. It's pretty badass, and that's why I want to get this working. Because it would just be so cool. Um... Yeah, once again, we've got stuff flowing out of the left of the right one. Oh, okay, so I'm going to get that cheat sheet from up here that I had. Oh. So we want to say, give me the flux coming out of the right of the thing on the left. Um, and subtract the flux coming out of the left of the cell on the right um, and then add the two more ah stop jumping over all those symbols I know that's what you're meant to do but I'm being an idiot and we add on We don't seem to need top or bottom in this. But we do need um, flux at position. Oh, wait, I got that wrong, haven't I? That's coming out of the left of our current position. So this is flux pulse, and this is then is um, flux Pass, and the last one is coming out of the left of the thing on the right. Yeah, that's that. That looks right to me. All divided by two. Multiply by half, whichever way you prefer it. Um, okay. Oh, good grief. Come on. And then we don't need to do our divide here. We can actually do our divide over the entire vector that we're making because they said we need to do this for... This is how you get x, so we can do y, z, and w. Have I just put those inside each other? I think I have. Um, but even finishing this function is not going to... Um, get us anything drawing, so I don't think we need to push too hard to do that tonight, because it is quarter past ten. And that was... we got a little further. That's, uh, I guess that's just where we are right now. We are onto this page, <laughs> where we're getting into um, taking our water flow, 
which is we're calculating some stuff about here. This is going to be the velocity vector for, of our water flow. We're then going to work out when it hits the terrain how much sediment it picks up, which is something that's going on here. Um, they modify this function a couple of times, I think. Yes, this is when they modify the function to take account for the fact that under deep underwater there is less of this going on um, than in shallow water, less erosion. Um, and then they do, this is, yeah, they modify this function a few times. And then this is about actually dissolving more soil into the, into the solution. That's about right. Um, and then it's going to making sure we don't screw things up. And then we'll get into flowing water downhill and into deposition, which we will do next week. And this is this takes us to the end. This, this is where we need to get to next week. So we are currently here. We need to get through this column and this column and this page. And then we should have something. So um, thanks again for watching. Uh, I'll say that now, but I'm free to take more questions via them here. And I will look at chat and see if I missed anything. Um, When is Oslo sundown? Probably about, I don't know, man, two in the morning. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it, it'll be light out there for quite a while yet. Uh, I love, I love summer in Norway. I, I just fucking, it's like we went out camping and we we're sitting out there and we we're roasting some lamb and it was about half, but it was, I could still see inside a tent at, at midnight and by half one it was starting to get a little bit darker. And it was like, oh, Jesus, it's actually getting dark now. Two, it was starting to get darker. And then suddenly it's it just like we're sitting there and it started getting brighter again. It's just like it never got dark. It was fucking wonderful. Uh, I, I, yeah, it's a good country. Anyway, um, no, thank you. Thanks for all for turning up. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, when am I going to come to Switzerland so I can treat you to a coffee? Man, that would be cool. I should come to Switzerland. That's a really good idea. Um, that would be, yeah. We'll have to, have to sort that at some point. I'm trying to trying to build up some savings again because I haven't done that in a while, and it just feels good to make a make a little pile of money I can screw John Top off for Scrooge McDuck on for a while. But um, yeah, yeah. Once I've got that sorted, I'll I think about traveling again. Um, Van Laser, thanks. Would it be possible to show stuff incrementally, i.e., not implement all the formulas before showing stuff? I don't know. Like, it's really hard to tell, actually. Um, with this one i mean if it was if it was something we could do incrementally that would be really good i mean i could totally like what we can do is let's uh move this terrain back a bit um what can we do really quickly i mean we could grab some perlin noise and throw it on here and um displace the terrain but that won't be anything to do with erosion. That will just be something we've kind of done before. And then it will just be a lumpy thing sitting in the background of what we're doing. I think we just can need to sweat it out right now. This is one of the areas where live coding doesn't really help us. Other than the fact I'm not having to recompile every time and like to, to get a failure. Like I'm just recompiling the single function that I'm busy screwing up. Um... Come to Paris and I'll get you drunk. I love this plan. Oh, I, I again, another week and another fail of me too. I haven't set up the um, Patreon thing. I have looked into the legal side of it now and it looks like it's going to be okay. So if you folks want to spos sponsor my um, going down to a cafe and coding on Keppel from there, I will have a Patreon and you'll be able to throw a little bits of money into my coffee pot. That would be awesome. Um, and I will come to Paris at some point. That would be lovely. Um, so yeah, Van Laser, I'm not sure if we've got a better way of doing this right now. I expect by the time when I finish this and understand it, I, I can probably come up with a way of doing it more incrementally. Um, but once it's working, we will go through it step by step and work out what's actually going on. Um, <laughs> I'll need to do that for sure. Uh, Kevlcon 2017, that would be so funny. Um... Yeah, man, New Zealand. I would love to get back to New Zealand. It'd be so cool. 
I miss it. South South Island, I really enjoyed as well. Like, uh, that was more. I mean, I'm just not a city person. So uh, where are you anyway? What what island are you on? Uh, Ludum Dare is on the weekend after next. Awesome. And he'll be streaming during the daytime. Watch Shamara build things. And hopefully some of his mates as well. Um, see you later, Entropy. Good to, good to have you today. Um, sweet. Okay, right. I will actually call it a night. So thank you so much for hanging around as we work, slowly work our way through this paper. Um, come around next week and we will slowly work through this paper some more. And then maybe that stream, or maybe the stream after, will get something actually visual. God, I hope so. Um, that's it. Peace. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you later.